We've been talking about arithmetic and algebra, and we've been trying to flex our muscles on this um, because this is kind of your bread and butter. This is your who's who's an, uh, an Australian Open fan? Who watched the Australian Open over summer? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm kind of a bit of a nut. So I, this is to give you a tennis metaphor. This is the forehand of the advanced and extension one course. Okay, you're going to be doing this constantly, all the time. It's the kind of thing you don't want to think about, how do I do this, right? You're going to be doing this all the time. You want this to be kind of effortless. The word we use in the mathematics syllabus for this is fluency, right? When you're fluent in a language, you don't think, you have to, don't have to look up a phrase book or a dictionary to think about what words are going to come out of your mouth. You just, you know what these words mean. You know what I'm saying right now, hopefully. You're like, these words are English, this is a language I'm fluent in. This is a skill or a set of skills that you want to be fluent in because there's other things, other real problems that you want to focus on. Yes, it slides, well done. Other real pro problems you want to focus on and you don't want to have space in your brain taken up by having to, you know, like, I don't know how to, I'm not very comfortable with this. I've got to think really hard about how to do this. And then there's this whole other problem I've got to solve, okay? This part you want to do automatically. Now, with quadratic expressions and equations, we already know, just to remind you, right? What's the difference between an equation and an expression? It's in the word itself. An equation has an? Thank you very much. So this is something equal to something else. When we're working with expressions, sometimes we introduce an equal sign, but that's just so that we can simplify, work with it, interact with it. These guys come with the equal signs right out the box. Okay. Now for that reason, we're going to teach you about or revise you over three different skills today, but one of them's about expressions and two of them are about equations. And not knowing the difference causes problems. So that's why I'm highlighting it for you now. Okay? Now the first one, which you're going to be reasonably familiar with, starts with an F. When you have a quadratic expression, like x squared plus 5x plus 6, you can do what to it? What's the instinctive thing to do? Factorize. factorize. Thank you very much. You can factorize an expression. Okay? Uh, and that's pretty much all you can do. You can't solve an expression, can you? Because it's not equal to anything, right? So you're not going to get, oh, x is equal to this. If it's an expression, like I said x squared plus 5x plus 6 before, x can be absolutely anything you like. It's not, it doesn't have to equal anything, okay? Now with equations, there are two other skills that are related to this, but you probably kind of mix them together in your brain, okay? When you've got, like, not something like this, but if you've got some weird awkward quadratic formula, like say this, okay? You can still work with this, sorry, expression. You can still work with this, you can still solve this, but you're not gonna to try to factorize, are you? What are you gonna do? What skill did you learn last year that would help you? You could, say again? Two answers out of this. You're gonna get, you are gonna get two answers out of this, I hope, something or something else. What mechanism will we use to get those two answers? Yeah. We're gonna use the, so close. I think I know what you mean, but it's not quite, We've got a quadratic equation, that is one. Starts with an F again. What is it? It's the formula, right? So we call it the quadratic formula. Yeah, yeah. In fact, let's jot this down so we can remember this, right? The quadratic formula is, it's a bit awkward, x equals, I'll give you a clue, it's got a, it's a big fraction, right? Does anyone remember what the big fraction starts with? Yeah, go ahead. Don't tell us the whole thing, tell me how it starts. Very good. And then, because as was pointed out, there are two solutions, right? This next bit says plus or minus, indicating one of the solutions you'll get by adding and one of the solutions you'll get by subtracting, okay? What am I adding and, and subtracting? It's a big square root sign. And then, hmm, what's under here? Very good, okay. B squared minus 4AC, okay? It's sort of kicking in, that's the numerator, it's a bit big and gross, thankfully the denominator is not big and gross, it's just 2a, cool. So this is the quadratic formula and you've encountered it before, um, it took a bit of time for us to remember it, so maybe this is, this is the whole point of jogging your memory on this. The quadratic formula is something you can only do to an equation, not an expression. Right? Because what you're going to get out of the quadratic formula is x is equal to a couple of different values. Right? When you have a look at this guy, x doesn't equal to like only two values. x can be anything you like. You can choose. It's a variable. Right? So the quadratic formula is something you only do to these equations. How many of you know, and I'm expecting I don't know, some of you, but probably not all of you, how many of you know where the quadratic formula comes from? Like, 
this didn't just come in a box. People just discovered it one day. There was something we knew how to do to get us there. Does anyone know? Yeah. It's from AX squared plus BX plus C. Okay, let's write this down. AX squared plus BX plus C. What you're stating here is the general equation of a quadratic, sorry, the general form of a quadratic equation, right? Where A, B, and C could be anything you like, yeah? Now there's something that we do, and again, if you don't know it, it's totally okay, that's what I'm trying to get a sense of. There's something we can do to this that actually turns it into that. Does anyone know what that is? It's a bit awkward. Yeah, go ahead. Ah, okay. Can you say that one more time just louder so the entire room can hear you? You solve this the way you solve a perfect square. So just so we all know what you're talking about, this is a perfect square. This guy here, right? It's something squared. There's nothing else, so it's, it's perfect. There's no extra bits hanging on. So we somehow want to turn something that looks like this into something that looks like that. It's a, just go straight path. It's fine. It's fine. It's okay. I, I can edit. That's, that's what I do. Um, now this process, this process, it has a name. Turning this, which looks gross and messy, into this, which looks nice and neat. And maybe this rings a bell. This process is called completing the square. Completing the square. Okay. Now, uh, these three. One, two, and three. This is what we're going to, good morning, spend the bulk of our time on, okay? So uh, today, because even though we have three periods, there's a lot to cover here, right? Like these are some big, massive ideas. So this is where we're going. Make a little subheading for me, which is factorizing. Okay, now, let's begin with this example that I actually already wrote on the board. x squared plus 5x plus 6. It's a really nice, easy one to deal with. x squared plus 5x plus 6. Now this is just an expression at the moment. There's no equal sign. So we could factorize it right now. If I factorize it, I'm just going to put this underneath. Factorizing, as the name suggests, is writing something in terms of its factors, right? With numbers like, say, 18. You can break up 18 into factors like 2 times 9. Those are two factors that multiply together. Or 3 times 6, right? So there are these two factors that multiply together to give this. Now, we've actually spent like a good couple of years on this. Can anyone tell me right away what the factors are? Yeah, go ahead. 3 and 2. Okay, now I'm going to use those numbers. 3 and 2. Okay, those are the two numbers I'm going to think of, but I notice that they're kind of part of a factor. 3 and 2 are not the factors of that because 3 times 2 is not x squared, there's no x's in it, right? So 3 and 2 are the factors of 6, but I can use those numbers, what's missing? Yeah, the x's, right? So x plus 2, that's the factor. x plus 3, that's the other factor. Are you with me? Okay, so and in fact that's probably worth writing down. This whole thing is a factor. And this whole thing is the factor. But of course, we thought of 2 and 3 because they were the important parts of it, right? Now, let me push on that. How did you think of 2 and 3? Where did 2 and 3 come from? So I, I know you know the answer because you gave me the numbers. Someone else tell me. I think we know, right? Yeah, go ahead. Two, sorry, 2 times 3 gives you 2 times 3 gives you 6, and 2 plus 3 gives you 5. So these are the numbers that we're focusing on here, yeah? We want numbers that add up to this multiply to that. Okay, are you happy so far? Yep. Okay, good. Now, this is with an expression, right? If I change this into equations, so this is a whole different question now. This is a different question, okay? Do you see that factorizing is a step we can use to get us toward the solution, right? It's, it's not something you do to get to the answer right away. It's like an intermediate step, okay? So factorizing is something you do to an expression, and then you can go ahead and subsequently Solve. So what would I get at the bottom here? Again, like we accepted before, there will be two solutions. Let's get someone who hasn't suggested an answer yet. Thank you, though. What do you think? X is minus 3 or X equals minus 2. Okay. Are you happy with that? Negative 3 
or negative two. By the way, total minor pedantics um, point, but these are negative signs, yeah? Minus is an operation, it's something you do between two different numbers, and negative is an a quality, it's an adjective. There's no like pair of numbers here, it's just negative three itself, okay?